It's interesting, isn't it, when you think you've got more time than you actually have. Maybe that's what happens when you get old. Life's whizzing past you quicker than you'd expect. I thought maybe the Varroa might not get to South Australia for another season or two, but it's only just across the other side of the river at the minute, which isn't very far from me, so I don't think it's about, a, I don't know, 200 k's away if it's lucky. So I'm tipping before next almond pollination, I'll probably be treating the little suckers. Tick, tick, goes the time bomb of the Varroa mite, I think. It's getting closer by the day. I don't know, Ada Lass from Mildura texts me that um, she's got them just over the creek. Well, it's the river, actually. Mind you, you guys in America, I remember I was at an almond conference and you came over here and one of the, one of the big guys said to us, why don't you put some concrete in that channel? Golly gosh, you'd lose a lot of water out of the bottom of that. And there he's looking at the River Murray. So I've never actually been to America. If you'd happen to want to meet me and want to pay me to come over there, feel free to send me some money because, you know, I could do with a goo for a trip. Anyway, so the more the mites, the closer the mites get, which they're getting closer every day. So I've been reading more and getting more involved. We did a Q&A the other night, which was rather quest rather... Whew, rather involved. We had like, what did we have? 60 people turn up from all over the place talking about all this. And I think that's one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to have a conversation because otherwise we're all in trouble. We're all sitting here, freaking out, hiding in our bedrooms going, oh, it's the end of the world as we know it. And I can't sing any more of that song because apparently it's copyrighted. And also I wouldn't want to insult them because I can't sing for crap. So anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> what do I think about Varroa mites coming? I think... I think it was kind of inevitable anyway, but I wish it wasn't. But here we are. I reckon that's interesting. I got a little, after our Q&A session, I got an email from a dude telling me that technically we haven't actually got anything registered in Australia to treat the mites. We've got, so we can have a little, what do they call that? Um, it's called something when you can have it. It's not a license, it's called something when you get it, exemption. an exemption, maybe. But it's not even called that, it's called something else. Anyway, you can get hold of some of the mite strips if you happen to be in the disaster zone. I find it interesting, after 12 months of excitement, and every time I open the bloody website, it goes, bing, there's another red dot, bing, and it's like a, f anyway. And it's in the edge of Sydney, for goodness sakes. I mean, that's, a, that's not a bad sized town, Sydney. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, we call it a city, obviously. A few places around, we'd only call it a town, but, you know, <laughs> it's it's a decent whack when it comes to us mob down here, down under. It's not too... F <laughs> it's not too much imagination to think that the bees are going to be infected. So here we go. But we're a year in, and we still haven't got the jolly thing, chemicals registered to treat the jo jolly jack little mite. I mean, I don't know too many beekeepers that are probably going to want to go out there and waste a lot of money putting a lot of pest strips in just for the hell of it. So surely they could just get the thing registered and then we would do our mite checks and hopefully we could treat them if they turn up. I mean, <laughs> I was thinking the other day, though, one thing that I did think could be positive about mites is that at least when you get foul brood, you're buggered. You find one cell with foul brood, you've got to set fire to the whole colony. At least with these little blighters, if you catch them and you know what you're doing, you can treat them and some of them die. Apparently, not all of them die. But <laughs> at least so you're in with a chance. Just you've got to be a bit more diligent. So, I don't know. I mean, is that a positive? Am I trying my grasping at straws here, I think, trying to be positive? I'm looking for an upside, but I don't know where I'm going to find one. I don't know whether it's an advantage or a disadvantage being on the world stage of this mess. It's kind of cool because you get a lot of information that maybe other people would miss. So I just thought I'd pass this along. I've got an email from a dude from America who's quite a big beekeeper and quite well established. And um, I think he's, anyway, I don't know. He's done a, he's been a beekeeper for plenty of, plenty of his life and he's quite well researched and he's done the lots of things and his comment was that it's taken America about 20 years to get themselves into a position to deal with this little mite in some effective format. And he was suggesting that perhaps we would be wise to learn from their mistakes. Let's not just, we do not have to do it again. I mean, I was thinking as a kid, 
when they actually decided to introduce open learning in the school. I mean, that was a great idea from America that failed, but we turned up 20 years after it was a disaster and thought it was a great option. So let's not do that. <laughs> let's actually read some of the research. Let's listen to the bloke like, I don't know, what's his name, Mr. Binney, or whoever it is that's doing the might stuff. Let's read some of their research and believe them. That would be a good start. Let's actually just go, it's the same might. It's the same bees. It might be a different country, but I think it's going to be the same result, for God's sake. Oh, hell. Where to from here is the next thought that pops into my brain. I think I'll refer back to our Q&A the other night, and I reckon it was Trev. I hope it was. I'm, I'm terrible because there was too many people in there. My brain got scrambled. But I think it was Trev that said, the idea is to maybe just chill out and get yourself sorted so as you know how to deal with the mites as you go through. Because it sounds to me, if you're roughly going to be in trouble and probably lose half of your bees, generally speaking, as a general rule. And so, I don't know, that seems like a fair in pass to my way of thinking. So my game plan is to just, well, my game plan when I, these mites turned up a year ago changed to, to a degree and I was... What's that called when you're circling at the airport, you know, and you're going around in circles waiting to land? Holding pattern. Holding pattern, there you go. And Anyway, my idea was just to be in a holding pattern for the year and we'll see what happened because I was, I was rooting for the DPI to do an eradication program. I was on their little cheer squad waving my flag going, yeah, go, go for it, boys. Except for the fact that the bloody burning and the destruction and all that was a shit show, but anyway... I was hopeful, but now I'm not so hopeful. So I think I'm landing the plane in a desert and I'm thinking about the fact that I reckon I'm just going to not expand and I'm just going to consolidate and just see how I deal with it when it gets to the next bit. Oh, but I guess, lucky for you, if I scale back a little bit of my commercial operation and I make a bit more content so we can all interact and you guys can have a platform to discuss where we're going forward, I'm a bit afeard the first time I find one of these mites to put the photo up because, I don't know, there'll be probably the black suits and the helicopter land in my backyard and set fire to me, but hopefully not. But if you do find a mite, don't be afraid because we've really got to report it and see what happens next. Because I think we're going to management. Not everybody agrees with me, but here we go. I'm a, well, I think I made a quote the other day when I said, I reckon I'm 60-40 and 60% reckons it's going down to shit and 40% reckons it's going to be good. But who knows? Come along for the journey and we'll all find out together. I guess one thought does pop into my mind on this journey. Any of you beekeepers out there that are getting screwed by the big boys and selling honey cheap right now, if you can possibly hang on to some of it, It'll be the last of the untreated honey that'll be available. It might be worth a fortune. It might like the other day I was down in the jolly supermarket buying me groceries for the missus and myself, getting a steak and a chop and whatever else it was doing. We're going through the checkout and there was a packet of tailor-mades, like the little 50 gram packet of tobacco for 135 bucks down here. And I thought, holy hell, if I'd bought a thousand bucks worth of that crap when I was a kid at 20 bucks each, I would have made a fortune. That was, that was better investment than any share market I'd ever seen. Man, anyway. So maybe you could store some honey away and you'll be able to sell it. Chemical free honey. Heck, you might make a fortune. And if I haven't actually repeated myself enough times, don't forget, if you're enjoying the show, click like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Heck, let's just grow beekeepers and the love of the whole exercise. Be there or be square.